This is Bloomberg Crypto, a daily Bloomberg iHeart podcast. And I'm Stacey Marie Ishmel, Managing Editor of Crypto for Bloomberg News. It's Tuesday, September 27th. I'm Anne Herrera, a senior crypto editor for Bloomberg News, in today for Stacey Marie Ishmael. You may have heard of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, and you may have heard of its CEO and founder, Sam Bankman-Fried. But have you heard of Alameda Research? No, it's not a Silicon Valley robotics lab. It's one of the largest and most influential cryptocurrency trading firms in the world. Alameda was founded by Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF, as he's known. The trading firm operates out of the Bahamas, along with the rest of the SBF empire. With a modest team of only 30 employees, Alameda pocketed over $1 billion in profit in the last year. The firm and its employees have, for the most part, preferred not to draw too much attention. In recent months, though, it's gotten harder for Alameda to fly under the radar, as the collapse of crypto has revealed a tangle of connections between Alameda, FTX, and the broader virtual currency markets. As Alameda's influence spreads and connections emerge, so have concerns over potential conflicts of interest. Bloomberg reporter Hannah Miller joins me now. These are two companies founded by the same person and at that point managed in part by the same person. As we attempt to untangle these connections. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Anna. How's it going? So let's set the scene. First of all, what is Alameda Research and what do they do? Well, Alameda Research, you know, the name sounds more like some Silicon Valley startup dedicated to robotics or something like that. A little bit of a mysterious name, but it is actually a quantitative trading firm that specializes in crypto. And it purposefully chose that name to kind of fly under the radar you know, be something a little mysterious. And uh, they've actually taken the crypto world by storm. So where are they based and how have they grown into such a big and prominent player in in crypto? What's their history? They're currently based in the Bahamas. Uh, They were founded in California, in Berkeley, then moved over to Hong Kong and then went to the Bahamas uh, to establish a new headquarters. And they are one of the top crypto native market makers in the industry. Uh, They're comparable to, I would say, Jump Crypto, Wintermute, if you guys know those names. And they're really just an incredible player, especially considering that they have a very small team of only 30 people. Is research among the things that they do? Research is among the things that they do, but a lot of that research is kept internally. It's not published in reports or things like that, but basically they do conduct research on the crypto market in order to develop algorithms that help them trade more effectively. So I guess it's worth telling our listeners, you know, who might not be familiar that diff- that they're they're not like a fund, they trade their own money like they're a prop trading firm, right? Exactly. Uh, And they do some other things, too, like venture investing, though that has recently changed. Um, And they are also known for being founded by Sam Bankman-Fried, one of the biggest names in digital assets. Five years, Sam Bankman-Fried went from buying his first Bitcoin to becoming a multi-billionaire. The FTX founder is now worth an estimated $11 billion. It is just fascinating to see, uh, you know, just how ambitious and seemingly successful uh, SBF has seemed to be. They call him the JP Morgan of crypto. Right? <laughs> the Michael Jordan of crypto, if you will. <laughs> uh, Sam Bankman Fried is really playing a key role. So, what kind of relationship do Alameda and FTX have? It's an interesting relationship. You know, they are in very close proximity with each other. They're both based on the same corporate campus in the Bahamas in separate buildings. And the employees also have close relationships. Sam and has, has worked very closely with Alameda's CEO, Caroline Ellison. And they've actually, you know, we've had Alameda employees and FTX employees live together 
at one point in time. So what is Sam's role now with Alameda? Because he was once the CEO. Yes, Sam stepped back from Alameda in October 2021. He named two co-CEOs, Caroline Ellison and Sam Tribuco. Sam Tribuco recently stepped down as co-CEO of Alameda. So Caroline now has sole control of the company, but Sam Bankman-Fried is likely still a majority owner of the firm. So how has Alameda's relationship to FTX changed in the sense like its business ties, right? How has that evolved? What does it do on FTX now? Yeah, so Alameda was founded before FTX. When FTX was trying to get off the ground as a crypto exchange, they needed a market maker. And they had Alameda be the main market maker on FTX, which is pretty interesting because you wouldn't necessarily see that kind of relationship in traditional finance. These are two companies founded by the same person and at that point managed in part by the same person. But since then, Alameda has dropped down. It is no longer the top market maker on FTX, according to both Bankman Freed and Ellison. And it still does market making on FTX. It's actually one of the top depositors of stable coins on the platform, according to some data analytics that we collected when writing the story. So why have there been concerns about potential conflicts of interest? And obviously, you know, we want to be clear that we're saying potential and concerns and there's no evidence that there is, is any comp, direct conflict that has arisen or any any wrongdoing. But, you know, why have people why are people in the market discussing this and what have they told you, I guess? Yeah, market watchers are concerned about the potential for Alameda to get preferential treatment on FTX. Um, but when talking to Ellison and talking to Bankman Freed, you know, they said that they treat Alameda the same way as they would any other market maker, that there's no you know, special preference for Alameda. When talking to Bankman Freed and Ellison, both emphasized that there are clear barriers between the two companies. Uh, they have separate offices, even though they're on the same campus. And there are po corporate policies in place to prevent employees from one company from sharing trading or customer information with employees of the other. So they have taken steps to sort of silo off the two companies from each other. Alameda is less of a known name compared to FTX, which is, you know, a retail tra trading platform, as you said, and they, their advertising is everywhere. They have billboards. They had an ad on the Super Bowl. But, you know, Alameda has been not in the shadows, but has been less prominent before, which is kind of typical for a market maker, right? You have that in finance too. Market makers are big, but they don't really do PR, or do advertising, because in a way they don't need to because they're trading their own money. So they need, don't need to attract investment from outside. Um, so why have they become more prominent recently? Like, how have they emerged and like, how have their connections emerged more in this particular moment in crypto? Yeah, well, their founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, has just really gained prominence within the past year or so, uh, both within crypto and within tech and finance more broadly. You know, he's appearing in Vogue ads with Giselle Bündchen. He is doing interviews. He's testifying before Congress about crypto regulations. He is pretty much everywhere when you look at crypto. So Alameda, you know, his baby, his first company, uh, is pretty interesting to look at. And they're, they're becoming a more prominent player. They had $1 billion in profit last year. And then it's interesting, too, Caroline Ellison is very much a different kind of leader than Sam Bankman-Fried. Uh, Bankman-Fried is always putting himself out there, super active on crypto Twitter, again, doing interviews all the time. Ellison's a bit more mysterious. She doesn't have as much of a social media presence. Uh, you know, she's starting to have, I guess, a more an external facing role with Alameda now that Sam Tribuco has left the company. We'll be right back with Bloomberg reporter Hannah Miller.
More pain in the world of crypto. Voyager Digital files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection just days after the broker suspended withdrawals on the platform. This is a lender and also sort of a brokerage firm. What does it mean that they're filing for bankruptcy protection? So another thing that has happened in this crypto winter has been bankruptcies, right? And what role have um, Alameda, SPF and FTX played in this? And how are those roles somewhat interconnected at times? Well, Bakeman Freed has been referred to as a bailout king, J- crypto's JP Morgan. He's really stepped in and been the architect of various bailouts that have helped struggling platforms uh, affected by crypto winter. We spoke to him about the Voyager deal, um, where they put in an emergency credit line to this struggling crypto lending platform. It ended up not being enough to help Voyager. Uh, the company did still file for bankruptcy. And now there are you know, different companies, including FTX and Alameda in a joint venture, are bidding to buy Voyager's assets. And it's actually gotten pretty contentious between different parties, with Voyager calling Alameda and FTX's offer a lowball bid. So one of the things you mentioned was how there are differences between, you know, crypto markets and traditional markets as usual. How are these firms regulated and how is it different from traditional finance? The crypto regulatory landscape is constantly changing. We still don't know which regulator is going to be primarily in charge of digital assets. The SEC and the CFTC have been vying for control over the industry. One thing that we do know is that more oversight is going to be put in place very soon. Again, as I mentioned, Bankman-Fried has been active in testifying before Congress and advocating for the industry and asking for more regulatory clarity. I think it's possible uh, that there will be rules and regulations put in place that help prevent tight relationships between companies that do business with each other And it remains to be seen whether that could potentially affect Alameda and FTX. So Alameda is a prop trading firm, but they have also played a big role in venture investing. How does that work and how has that shifted, right? Because you had a big story recently about that too. Yeah, Alameda has been a big name in venture capital investing, supporting emerging startups like Anchorage Digital, Uh, which is a crypto bank, and Magic Eden, which is an NFT marketplace. Uh, They're a big-name investor. So it was really interesting uh, when I spoke with Ellison, who said that Alameda was actually shifting over much of its venture operations to FTX Ventures. And that's the venture arm of FTX, which launched earlier this year in January. And I confirmed that with the head of FTX Ventures, Amy Wu, Uh, who said that they were really taking on the startup investing from Alameda, that they had brought over one of Alameda's employees to help with that. And crypto venture capital is just a super fascinating space. A lot of investors are still very bullish on the crypto industry, Um, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, how startups do with uh, (laughs) this prolonged crypto winter. (laughs) Thank you, Hannah, for joining me today. You can find more of Hannah Miller's reporting on the Bloomberg Terminal, on Bloomberg.com, and on Twitter. She's at HGMiller29. I'm Anne Herrera, Bloomberg Crypto Senior Editor. In today for Stacey Marie Ishmael. On the next episode of Bloomberg Crypto, I'm Emily Nicole, crypto blogger for Bloomberg News, and tomorrow I'll be in for Stacey Marie Ishmael. Did you know that there's an entire conference dedicated to crypto skepticism? Stephen Deal is a software engineer by trade, a leading crypto skeptic and author, and now co-founder of the recently established Center for Emerging Technology Policy. He'll join me to break down crypto's promises of a brighter tomorrow and where he thinks it might actually be closer to myth. This is Bloomberg Crypto, a daily podcast from Bloomberg and iHeartRadio. For more shows from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Send us your comments, questions, or suggestions for the show to crypto at Bloomberg.net. Or find us on Twitter. We're at crypto. The supervising producer of Bloomberg Crypto is Vicky Vergolina. Our senior producer is Janet Babin. Our producers are Mohamed Farouk and Sharon Barrero. Our associate producers are Ty Butler and Moses Undam. Desta Wonderad is our engineer. Original music by Leo Sidron. I'm Stacey Marie Ishmael. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.